Hey guys, it's Brickman117. Welcome back to the channel and the review video for my latest mock, the Ultimate Warthog. For those long-time followers of the channel, you'll know that I have created an Ultimate Warthog before, as you can see here. This mock was based on a figure scale Ultimate Warthog. I wanted to create as much detail as I could, but still try to retain the figure scale of the build. For those that haven't seen that video, I've linked it into the description for you. Moving back to the current build, I'm sure you would have been able to tell by the thumbnail that it's definitely not figure scale. And this is the reason why I was inspired to have another go at the Ultimate Warthog after purchasing and building the 10th anniversary collector series UNSC Warthog set 96973 that was released by Mega Blocks almost 10 years ago. This is a set that's never really appealed to me in the past, which is why it took me nearly nine years to actually purchase one and build it. The main reason for the purchase was for the wheels, as I have an ultimate build planned which needs these large wheels. I decided to actually build this set out of curiosity more than anything and I'm so glad that I did because the build was so much more enjoyable than I had ever expected and the shelf presence is what inspired me to actually have a go at upgrading it and giving it the ultimate treatment. As soon as I saw how amazing it looked just sat there on the side unit in my lounge I thought I've got to have a go at that. This can be improved. It's a 10 year old set well in need of a makeover. As good of a set as it is this is an old set using old parts and as you can see by the ultimate build see you can achieve so much more now than you could 10 years ago with Mega Constructs's current parts library. Before we get stuck into the details of the build, I just wanted to clarify that this Warthog is based off of the Jazzware World of Halo Warthog, not the recently released Warthog Rally set from Mega Constructs. The reason I chose the World of Halo Jazzware's version was simply because I felt it looked more like the in-game Warthog that we saw on the gameplay release trailer late last year. Now it could be that both variants are featured in the game but at this point I don't believe we've seen the Warthog Rally version in any of the footage released by 343 for the upcoming Halo Infinite games. So that's why I decided to base this build on the in-game version that we've seen so far. What we're going to do next is take a closer look at some of the interior and exterior details of the build I'll also show you some size comparisons against some other sets but before we get into that if you're new to the channel I'd like you to consider hitting that subscribe button for future updates and if not you can always give us a like they're always appreciated okay then let's get stuck into it we're going to start off by taking a look at the interior it's one of my favorite areas of the build as you can see i've used as many printed pieces as i can all of these parts are from various sets i had in my collection i also used a couple of sticker elements as well that i scavenged from some of the wolverine sets that i had kicking around to act as glove box style elements to the passenger dashboard as well as the center console in between the two seats. I've also put a grab rail there for the passenger and I've used the steering wheel from the anniversary set which sized up pretty well for this mock. Moving away from the console and dashboard we come to the seats. Now the seats took a lot of thinking and a lot of time to to get right. They're five studs wide as opposed to the four studs wide on the original anniversary set and it made all the difference. I did have several goes at getting these seats right but I'm definitely happy with the end result. The only bit I'm not happy about is as you will see one of the seats is missing one section from the headrests. Even with all the parts I have in my inventory I could not find another one of those headrest pieces so it's the only unfinished part of the mock unfortunately. As we look down into the passenger compartment from above you can see the seat detailing much better and you can also see that I finished off the floor by putting these grid pieces in to resemble checker plate style flooring which I'm sure would be to the case if this was a real warthog given the amount of boots that would be going in and out of this vehicle in real life. Next up we'll move on to the main gun on the back of the hog. Now this was another headache. I used the original barrel setup from the anniversary warthog but everything else was custom and I've tried to recreate the look of that Jazzwares World of Halo gun. As you can see on the side I tried to use some of these grilled plate pieces to act as the ammunition ribbon that comes up from the ammunition case hung underneath the gun 
up to the main feed going into the gun. Whilst it's not perfect, it was the best I could do as I didn't have anything that was big enough to act as a proper ribbon like you get on these smaller warthogs. So it does have full elevation as all the normal warthogs too. You can turn it around, it does tap into the aerial a bit. Other than that though, you've got 360 and the usual elevation options you would get on any standard warthog you've had from Mega Constructs. Moving from the back to the front, we can take a look at the custom winch setup that I created. So I used various different pieces here. I used three original style mongoose wheels with the tires taken off to act as the cable spool in the middle of the winch there. I then put a bar through the middle of it so they can spin freely. I used the tusks from the 10 year anniversary warthog that I used for the wheels and so on. And then I used one of the hooks from the very old original warthog builds, the normal size ones, to act as the hook hanging off the cable that comes out of the front of the winch over the top of that bar, which would act as the cable feed. So no actual cable or string in there, but I think it gives a desired effect. Okay, now it's time to check out this suspension. Now, if you want to know how this suspension was put together, I suggest you view the build series that I released on the lead up to this review video. It explains most of what you need to know in those videos. But I did say in the suspension video that the spring tension was controlled by the amount of elastic bands that you put on each axle. This controls how stiffly the suspension springs back up once you've compressed it. Now as it is at the moment I've got it set very loosely so if I push it down it doesn't spring back up on its own accord. Now there is a reason for this. One it allows you to control the ride height of the hog. You can just keep pushing down on it so you can have it really low to the ground or you can have it raised up. Now I would imagine in law, I've never read anything, but you would imagine a warthog to have fully controllable height adjustable suspension, just like many modern four wheel drive vehicles do. When you're trying to travel at speed, you want the center of gravity lowered. So you'd compress that suspension down. When you're going off road, you want to jack it up a little bit. So this system allows you to do that. It also allows you to pose the vehicle with it set with a minimum amount of elastic bands on there, it allows you to dip just one corner of the vehicle and it will stay in that position. So if you wanted to take photos of it with it looking like it's banking hard around the corner and it's got some body roll on it, you can do that whilst you've got the least amount of bands on there. But if that's not really your thing and you actually want to see the suspension spring up and down, you just keep putting bands on. So I'm going to put a few bands on here and then you'll see the more bands I put on, the more sprung tension you get from this suspension to the point where you can actually push down on the front and it will come back up on its own. You can also push down on the back and it will come back up on its own. So it does work, but I must confess some of these pieces are struggling to hold themselves together. It could really do with some custom pieces just to make this lot a little bit stronger. It wouldn't last in the hands of a child. If you push in the right places, it does work, but I wouldn't fancy its chances in the retail world. This is going to be our last feature before we move on to some size comparison shots. Now, as you can see, I've had to brick build the fuel cans for the back of the hog just because the ones that they've produced for the smaller sets were just too small. So I brick built these with some of those pieces that Mega Construct sent me a while ago to create some banished sets from. As you can see, all three fuel cans can be removed in one section. They can actually be removed separately as well. I'm just not going to do that for the purpose of this video. Once those are off, you can remove the tool box, which sits above them. The remaining fourth fuel can can't be removed. It's actually built into the back of the tailgate. Below the tailgate, you can see I've got a rear bumper, which actually folds forwards to allow the actual tailgate to then be folded down so you can access the tray back of the hog. And if you don't want the tailgate or the fuel cans there, you can just remove the whole lot. You just simply pull it off of its hinges and then it's gone and you can use it as a tray back rather than the previous way, which I personally think looks just as good without the fuel cans and toolbox as it does with. Now that we've discussed all the details and had a good look around the mock, it's time to offer a few official sets up alongside it just to give you an idea of just how big 
this mock is because although I've had my hands all over it during the course of this video, I just don't think it does the mock justice in terms of its size. So the first set I'm going to offer up alongside it is the 2020 Warthog Rally set released by Mega Constructs, the GNB25, which is pretty much the standard size for any stock Warthog Mega Constructs has released for a number of years. So as you can see, as I offer it up alongside it, it is dwarfed by the Ultimate Warthog. It's just no comparison whatsoever. For me, this is the best way to highlight the size and detail of this build. And then secondly, I'm going to offer up what's left of the 10 year anniversary Warthog. Now, although it looks like a bit of a carcass sat alongside the Ultimate Warthog, the only things I've really taken off what's left of this wreck of a warthog is the screen piece, the rear roll bar, the tusks and the wheels. Other than that, I've not taken anything off, even though there's so many studs exposed. It does look like it's a lot more stripped than it actually is. But that's just a sign of the times. It's a 10 year old set, so they were nowhere near as refined back then as they are now. But either way, it still shows you that the Ultimate Warthog isn't a huge amount bigger than the official anniversary set. I've not counted, but at a guess, I'd say it's somewhere between four to six studs longer and about two to four studs wider. So in terms of feasibility of Mega Constructs making a 20th anniversary Warthog, which we hope they will, I think it's feasible that they could do a rebuild of this set and do something really impressive that I'm sure many of us would be pleased to see on the shelves. So that just about covers it for the review, but as a bonus for all you guys that have decided to stick around to the end of the video, I've managed to find a figure that will fit in this mock. I had lots of comments through the build process about try and fit such and such figure in it, mega constructs or otherwise. I had no idea whether anything would fit in here, but it just so happens I have one of the four inch Jazzware World of Halo Master Chief figures. So I decided to see how well he'd fit in. And would you believe it, with some very slight modification to the gun placement, I was able to pose him on the back of the hog, as you can see, where he looks absolutely fantastic. He almost looks made for this set. And he doesn't look out of place not being Mega Constructs at all. So super pleased with that. And then I even managed to squeeze him into the cockpit. But you do not want to know what I had to do to his legs to manage to get him into that seat. But either way, he's in there now. And again, he looks absolutely fantastic. So really pleased I had that figure because I think it really finishes the mock off. And for all of you that requested I get a figure in there, there you go. That's for you guys. And that really is just about it for this review. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you've got any thoughts, comments or questions, feel free to put them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to answer what I can. And I'll sure to be back soon with more content. So all that's left to say is thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.